It's time to go over something called Dalton's Law right here. And I illustrated it by this container or beaker. And let's say it has A and B in that beaker. That means above the beaker, there's gonna, and above the liquid really, there's gonna be some pressure. And that pressure will be due to both components that are in the liquid, both A and B. So we can actually say two things that are hopefully pretty intuitive. The sum of the moles of A and B equal the total moles, and the sum of the pressure of A and B equal the total pressure. And really, when we say pressure of A, I really mean the partial pressure of A, or the pressure contribution by A. And B is the partial pressure of B. So if you sum up both of these, here you get the total pressure above the liquid level. And uh, you can kind of write your formulas in a slightly different way. You can write XA, that's called the mole fraction. And literally, it's the fraction of moles. It's the moles of A over the total moles. But that also happens to equal the pressure rate of A over the total pressure. This can be rearranged to what's really called Dalton's Law, and that's that right there. The partial pressure of A is the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. Now, also helpful in Dalton's Law sort of problems are often the ideal gas law. And there's two helpful forms that I wrote it for you there. P total V total equals N total RT. So really, everything is a total. Uh, there's no total for the R because it's constant, and no total for the T because it's just a set temperature. Or you can do it in forms of fractions. The partial pressure of A is V total times the moles of A RT. So you're going to find those could also be helpful formulas. Now, how do you solve a typical Dalton's Law problem? Well, first, you recognize it because it's a mixture of more than one gas. And then the solving method, if I boil it down, really it's simplest. It's going from moles to pressure. Because typically in these questions, we ask you for pressure. Now, if we didn't, you'd have to go to whatever that we request of you. But typically, the starting point is going to moles, like any other kind of problem. So for example, let's say we have 4 grams of helium, and that's 4 grams per mole, and added to that 4 grams of hydrogen, and that's 2 grams per mole, and in a total of 6 liters. How would we find the partial pressure and the total pressure? Well, you can convert helium to moles and you get 1 mole of helium. You can convert the 4 grams of hydrogen to moles and 4 divided by 2, that'll be 2 moles of hydrogen. From that, you can easily find the total moles, and both are helpful quantities. The moles of each individually and the total. The total is just 1 plus 2, that's 3. Now, how do we go from that to the pressure? Well, I didn't pick a lot of numbers for us, so I just did this in general so you can see the flow. But to get the total pressure, that's usually the next easiest one to get. Uh, sometimes it's given, but if it's not given, this is how you do it. Use the ideal gas law from here. And total moles is 3, the total volume is 6, and I just did a little simplification, RT divided by 2. Okay, uh, didn't give it a temperature, so we'll just go with that. How would you find the partial pressure, say in this case, of hydrogen? Well, it's the mole fraction of hydrogen times the total pressure. Well, the mole fraction is the moles of hydrogen, 2, divided by the total moles, 3, or 2 thirds. And then P total is just from the previous equation didn't really give me some of these variables, so it just turns out to be RT over 3 in this case. We're going to do a lot more examples like this, um, but this is the basic flow and the idea of a Dalton's Law problem where you have a mixture, ultimately, of two or more gases.